With the new version in QuickBooks, a new tax model has been introduced. There are four main components to this new tax model. The first one is to the use of tax codes. Within QuickBooks 2007-2008 and previous versions, you were able to set up a tax code list. Within those tax codes, you assigned a rate to those. And you also assigned what's called a tax type, whether that is applicable for GST or GST free. Those tax codes then went on to flow into your tax reporting, in particular your activity statements. In QuickBooks 2008-2009, we see a change to this. At the transaction level, either the invoice or check or bill, you'll still see the same tax code list and you'll be able to apply that tax code to that transaction line. But if you actually go into the tax code list itself to edit those tax codes, you'll be able to select whether that tax code is taxable or non-taxable or exempt, and you'll be able to link that tax code to what's called a sales tax item or a purchase tax item. So this introduces a brand new area on what's called the tax item list. This looks fairly similar to the tax code list, but there are subtle differences. What you'll notice now that the actual rate is applied to the tax item. And those tax items can either be sales on the sales side of the business or on the purchase side of the business. These tax items are now what drives the tax reporting and what you'll need to configure correctly when filling out or completing or running your activity statements or end of month tax reporting. I'll show you a quick demonstration to show you how they work now. As you'll notice, there's now two options in the list menu. The first being the new tax item list and the second being the tax code list itself. So let's just go to the tax code list first off. What you'll notice is this is the default tax code list that you've had in previous versions of QuickBooks. However, what you will notice is if we go into that, you can see that things have changed slightly. First off, you'll notice that this now tax code can be either taxable or non-taxable or exempt. Equally, you can link this tax code to either a purchase tax item, and those are the various purchase tax items that we can link it to, or alternatively to a sales tax item. Now that's equally can be done for all your current tax codes. Moving through to the actual tax item list, double click into that item and we can now start to edit this. We can set the tax rate for that particular tax code. We can select the tax agency or supplier that collects that particular taxation item as well as we can set whether this item is going to be used on sales transactions or purchase transactions. So it's these that we need to pay particular attention when it comes to reporting. But when it comes to normal entering of tax invoices or checks or bills, we'll be using the tax code list just create a dummy one here. Select a door and see here we're now selecting our tax codes as we have in the past so there's no change. What you'll also notice on the bottom of the form is the ability to assign a customer tax code to that particular customer. The second major change is the setting up of the tax agency. 
Now within this edit supplier box, you have an additional tab along the right hand side. This allows you to assign a tax registration or ABN number to that particular agency, as well as select the reporting period and the period ending dates. One new addition to this is the ability to select accounts that the tax goes to when you're tracking on your sales or your purchases. So clicking on the supply center. What you'll notice is this new tab that's been added to the right hand side. This allows us to enter our ABN, the actual activity statement reporting period. Another new part of this allows us to select accounts for this type of agency. So for example, if we wanted to track our purchases into a sub account on the tax account, tax payable structure, we can. Equally, if we wanted to, to track tax on sales to a sales account, we could. Now, if you've already have ten tax transactions and you're upgrading from a previous version, it won't be possible to do that. However, if you're creating a new file in 2008, 2009, you have the ability to set those. The third area is changes to the tax payable accounts. These particular special types of accounts in QuickBooks are control accounts. In the past, you would have had a tax payable account. With QuickBooks 2008, 2009, it allows us to modify and have a more meaningful tax payable structure within that account, allowing us to create a tax payable purchase side and a tax payable sales side, and having the ability to link those accounts to the particular tax agency, making the account structure clearer and easier to understand. The final way, which is an improvement to QuickBooks 2008, 2009, is to set up a new managed tax center. This allows us an easy way to set up tax preferences. A shortcut way is to produce the end of financial period tax reports and equally ways to pay that tax liability or receive it. Click on the supplier drop down menu, select tax activities and manage tax. And you see you can now have quick access to the tax preferences, quick access to prepare your tax reports and to pay your tax, whether it's paying your tax to the ATO or receiving a refund. And finally, looking in more detail at your tax code list and your activity statement.